Hello everyone, it's Jack Cotton, luxury real estate expert, author, and agent. And I want to spend a session or two, or maybe three, talking about negotiation skills because as the fall market is here and the last quarter is upon us, we want to have a really great finish to the year, we can have an increased ratio of closed transactions if we become better negotiators. So I think it's a great idea to review some of the techniques we have talked about in the past. The best negotiation tactic I know of on the planet is not to have to negotiate. If you can possibly not have to negotiate, that is where you want to be. So the best way to overcome that uh, necessity is to really get strong and review the steps to handling objections. Because if you think about it, typically the need to negotiate comes about when there is an objection, when something, when there's two differences that have to be brought together, two people from two different perspectives. So let's just review the steps required to successfully um, overcome objectives, objections. First of all, um, here's a great idea. If you want to have a great office meeting sometime, get a whiteboard or a flip chart and gather everybody around. And just for the first time, let's talk about seller objections. Make a list of every seller objection you have ever heard from a seller during a listing presentation, during a listing appointment, and write them on the flip chart. And don't worry, you're not going to need a second page because I've never found any group of people who can get beyond nine objections. And if you have some new ones, some fun ones, share them with me, I would love to see them. But anyway, if you have these objections there, now you know these are the nine things or the seven things or the eight things that somebody could ask me or bring up to me during a listing presentation, it takes a lot of the pressure off. And you'll also have an immediate response once you are aware of these and you can learn them. But if you hear a new one, like will you cut your fee or your price is too low, I don't, I don't want to uh, do anything to prepare my house for sale. I don't have to sell. Not enough ads in the paper. Um, I'll wait and wait and wait. I don't care if I have to wait for five years, which is what I hear in this market. We'll wait five years. In fact, they do wait five years sometimes to get their right price. Um, not enough value put on emotional items. These are all the kinds of objections you can hear. And again, I'm curious to know which objections are you hearing? Maybe ones that I have not heard. So. Um, Think about this though, an objection really is just a question in the mind of a customer and that's unanswered. And you have to find the answer to that question to, um, to move on and get beyond the objection and, and alleviate the need to negotiate with them. So let's talk about the five steps. The first one is the hardest one for real estate professionals because it's pause. Silence is golden. Video time is valuable, so I'm not gonna pause too long right now to make my point, but just Pause. And when somebody does the pause on you, which we'll discuss in a later video, don't be sucked into babbling away and giving away the whole store, but just pause. Many objections will go away in that silence that ensues. Number two is to repeat and acknowledge. Stephen Covey said in The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People that we need to seek first to understand before we can expect to be understood. So when you repeat and acknowledge an objection to a client, they now know you have listened and more importantly, you have heard them. So I understand you want to net as much as possible for your home. I understand that you want to see your home in print. Repeat the objection. Number three is to isolate the objection. So, um, you know, other than the commission, are you ready to sign the contract? Or other than the commission, the length of time in the market and the fact that I don't do print advertising, are we ready to, are those the only objections that you have? You wanna make sure that before you start dealing with objections that you have the whole list of them, hopefully not more than one, but you wanna make sure you have the whole list of them before you start dealing with them. Because number four is to deal with the objection. Find a solution to the objection. If you were to go ahead and sign with me anyway, or if you were to go ahead and buy this house, how would you overcome that? What kind of solutions do you have? And what kind of solutions can you add as a luxury real estate agent. That's our job, isn't it, to solve problems? So deal with them, find solutions for them. And then the last step, number five, is to close. Let's sign the paperwork that authorizes me to go to work for you right now so we can get started in helping you get on with your goals. The five steps will work most of the time and they will alleviate the need to have to negotiate with anyone. But if they don't, we'll cover what you can be, what you can do to become a better negotiator in our next couple of videos. So stay tuned for those uh, next time. In the meantime, just want to remind you that the first Tuesday of the month is a great time to answer, get your questions answered about negotiation, about objection handling, about anything. Check out the website, luxuryrealestateunplugged.com. Until next week, make it a great one.